Yeah, I don't know when to stop, so yeah, we're gonna briefly touch upon Deathmatch Classic. I swear this is the last game I'm adding on to, like, the little series here. You know, I remember when this was about Half-Life? Yeah. Well, you know, th this is the last one, I swear. I almost did Gunman Chronicles and Ricochet, so trust me, like, you know, I, I, I was gonna keep going, but no. Fuck it, we're done with Deathmatch Classic. Which you might be saying, what the hell's even the point? This is just Quake. Um... I can refute that. It's almost Quake. It is 90% Quake. But it's not quite Quake. It's Deathmatch Classic. So, so there you go. And plus, dude, it's it's pretty much pointless to talk about these maps anyway. Because these maps, they're Quake variations anyway. Or they're Quake originals anyway. Have been discussed to hell and death by real, actual people that know what the game's like. And played it. And, like, you know, actually, like, played it competitively. But, you know, I'm a loser. So I'm going to do that with the Deathmatch Classic here anyway. Yeah. Also, I have a surprise for you regarding Deathmatch Classic. Uh, if you know anything about the, like, you know, stuff that gets leaked out of Valve's asshole, because, you know, people like le leaking their content, uh, you might know what I'm talking about, but we'll keep that a surprise for now. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to shut up. Anyway, so this is DMC E1M2, which is um, Castle of the Damned uh, from Quake E1M2, because it was the Episode 1 Mission 2, or Map 2 of Quake. Um... Even though it was designed for single player. Now, if you've never played Quake before, you can play every single Quake map, map in Deathmatch if you choose. Alongside the actual Deathmatch maps that they provide. Um, most of the times, like, you know, they're not ter terribly suited. You'll have a decent time, but they're like, you know, it's no guarantee the map layout will actually work well in Deathmatch. Uh, Castle of the Dam was the exception. that um, It got really popular. People really liked how it was laid out. It tends to be, even though it's a single player map, obviously, it's very open in the sense it's very roundabout, so it's very easy to move around like an actual multiplayer map. So that's why I think it ended up ca catching on. And just the way the layout works is just very suited for tight deathmatch play. I know typically people play it uh, 4v4, but we're going to be. There is actually no uh, team deathmatch in. Deathmatch Classic, uh, even though Quake had it. I mean, Quake had it with the shitty, like, you know, what player model you're using, or like, you know, I think, no, not player model, because there's only one player model. What pants, color of pants you're using, it was weird. Um, that, there, that doesn't exist here. Although, if you dig, th I know, I'm going to talk about the map, actually, believe it or not. If you dig through the leftovers of the game here, uh, they actually wanted to have a red versus blue team uh, deathmatch mode or something. But yeah, that's the text, like, files, all that remains. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, um, Castle of the Dam. Let's check it out. Now, you know, I, when I said I dispute the fact that, you know, Deathmatch Classic isn't quite Quake, it is super goddamn close, as was the intent, but there are some minor differences, I think, that make this stand out as a singular entity. Uh, the moving speed is a little bit slower. It's very hard to quantify if you haven't played both of them, but I've played both of them quite a bit, and yeah, this move is just ever so slightly slower than, uh, default Quake. Also, too, as you saw there, one of the, um, multiplayer options you can set that radically, fundamentally alter the game, and I've always had it on with these map videos for, like, uh, you know, Half-Life and Opposing Force, was Weapons Stay. So at least in, uh, the vanilla Quake, you couldn't set that. So every time someone would pick up a weapon, it would disappear like the items and then respawn a few seconds later. But here you can set it so weapons always stay. And I, to me, that actually changes how the game's played. Uh, Quake 1 and 3, vanilla Quake 1 and 3 didn't have that option. Quake 2 had it, though. I know, that's random. Anyway, so let's go back to where you would start in the original single-player version. Done by Tim Willits. I forgot to mention who made it. So yeah, this is where you would have started if this was Quake and, you know, single-player. So it's nice they included the slip gate there. So you got this little open here. You can hide behind here to get some little health and stuff. But, you know, that's you, re you really don't want to spend much time in here. As you can see, you get the nail gun, which, you know, is a, it's a decent weapon, but, you know... It's not much better than your default starting, say, like, shotgun, but, you know, I'm not really teaching anyone that. Now, you could go up this way, which, you know, I am actually going to go first because, you know, I'm an idiot. Go up this way, get some health kit and, you know, some shotgun shells. That's good. We'll talk about the bridge in a bit. But if you were to come this way, um, you can break this open, and it bleeds because, you know, that's actually just like it was in Quake, so that's a nice thing they kept. You can come up here and in you get the rocket launcher, which, you know, that's a good time. You know, rocket launcher is the king of the hill in uh, Quake Deathmatch and, by extension, Team Deathmatch Classic. Um, we'll talk about this area in a little bit. Uh, first, so let's go back into the water room here. You got this underwater area here. Don't worry too much about that. You Don't stay underwater too long at all in this map. It's just it's pointless. 
as you can see here, that's actually where that other little area we were overlooking leads. We'll lead you up into one of those rooms over there, but we'll talk about that later. Come up here. There's an elevator if you want to get up here fast. And yeah, we're back into the bridge area here. So this is where the bridge connects this room to that one. Uh, you know, obviously if you're, you're like playing this game nowadays, you're going to know to jump across, you know, maybe in 96 when Quake was starting out, it might've been a little bit tougher, but you know, it's pretty easy now. There was actually invisible wall. No, there's no, there's no wall here in the original. I get confused sometimes. Anyway, let's come here. And there's actually, grab the super shotgun or the double barrel. I don't know what it's called in Quake. Um, as you can see here, one major alteration they've made to this map uh, between uh, Quake and uh, Deathmatch Classic here is that the nail shooters are gone. Which obviously works better if you're just looking at this as a multiplayer map. You don't want unnecessary distractions. If you wanted to get... Normally, you'd have to shoot the switch in order to raise up the little, like, you know, thing here to get the uh, armor. But it's open right now. One of the bots must have sh shot it. I showed earlier, but I will go back down again. You can take this teleporter to get back into the... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, kind of bridge area there. You can also go down here. Again, there's no items in the water, so it's a little bit strange. But yeah, you can uh, you can go that way if you don't want to, like you want to get to this area without attracting too much suspicion. Uh, so if you come back this way, it is it really is weird navigating that bridge with the don 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 every three seconds. So if we go up here, you get to this little area where this is actually this starts uh, closed. Um, unless you spawn in here. If you spawn in here, you press this to open it. But if you actually happen to be, like, coming up this way, it's... It, it starts out closed, but if someone walks up this way, just like in Quake, it'll open up. Grab the grenade launcher. Always a good time. Uh, come this way to grab some ammo. There was a key here in Quake, but obviously that, that doesn't apply anymore. You can drop down here to get the super nail gun. One of my favorite weapons of all time. It might not be the best weapon in the game, but it's one of my personal favorites. I would love to have this thing in real life. And I love how they, like the model looks in like, you know, it looks way rounder. Because, you know, remember this came out, Deathmatch Classic came out in summer 2001. So like five years after original Quake. So yeah, these graphics are way, way nicer looking. Like, the, like, this map is, like, the lighting and everything. It's just a step above. Not as atmospheric. You know, I'm not saying that it looks necessarily better sty from a stylist point of view. I'm just saying from, like, a technical point of view, it does look better. Because, obviously, I, I think this map looks way better in its original Quake and Arcarnation. So, you get the quad damage. So, if you've never played this game, and if you wanted to get that, get that to open up, you had to press a little rock here. If you've never played Quake before, using the quad damage is exactly what it says. It makes you four times stronger. So definitely pick that up. Ideally with the rocket launcher, but not when you're right next to it. Because you're probably going to hurt yourself. As in, you're probably going to fucking die. So yeah, if you, like, this wasn't open, you could press this switch here. And it would send the, like, these little stone things up into these. And now it opens up these teleporters here. And if you come up this way, there's some nice stuff to grab. You can grab a med kit. Or you can just have a place to hide. Come this way if you want another super nail gun. And um, in the original version of the map, this would be the entrance to E1M3. But obviously, you know, that, that doesn't exist anymore. They didn't, they never actually brought that over because as far as I'm aware, that one wasn't as popular for Deathmatch as this one. This is basically like the most popular Quake single player map into Deathmatch. People were playing this one all the time. I've actually played real matches on this one before. So there you go. Um, it's really good. It's not quite my favorite, but it really does. It really gives you the Deathmatch feel if you're like, you know, if you happen to be playing on it. So yeah, check it out. If you were expecting me to say eight players is what I recommend for this map, you'd be absolutely correct, and I'd give you a handshake. Yeah, see, there you go. So, yeah, you had to press that first, and that's what gets the uh, quad damage here. Definitely want to take advantage of that if you happen to be starting next to that. I don't really think I'm say, teaching much of the here. Well, I'm not really teaching much anyway, because this map has been talked to hell and back, probably. All the Quake maps have been talked, like, the fucking hell and back. Like, I am not in any way breaking new ground. I might be breaking new ground by, like, you know, making, like, you know, videos about Deathmatch Classic. Also, this is a waste of a quad damage. I apologize. Damn it. Damn it. You know, it also makes me wonder how they got away with this. Because remember, this was a, fr even though you had to pay, like, I don't know, like $5 American now to get this on Steam as a standalone game. At one point, this is a free-ass mod you had for Half-Life. In fact, I don't know if it was even, like, you could actually get it, like, absolutely for free. Like, you'd even need Half-Life. Probably not, because, you know, that's how they always did their stuff with, like, Team Fortress Classic. It would be Half-Life, you'd buy it, and then you could get, like, you know, like, you know, like, the mods and stuff for it. Like, you know. So, I don't know, like, you know, because this is a pretty blatant, 
it's not like you can't really call it a ripoff. It did it. I mean, Valve did it apparently in tribute of id, and Val like Quake was actually like you know five years old by that point. So people would have been moving on to like Quake Two and especially Quake Three by that point, and like obviously Counter Strike was getting big. So I don't think id software would have given too much of a shit if like you know Valve would like yeah yeah we're gonna take Quake and make take huge chunks of it and put it out for free as its own thing, right? Like, obviously, the single player's not there, so, you know, that's one big thing. But, you know, I can't help but feel... Remember, um, I don't know who it was, but someone on the development team for Valve, when they are making Half-Life, ported all the Quake Deathmatch maps into, like, you know, the Gold Source engine, and was, was gonna have those available for, like, Half-Life, apparently. But, like, you know, that, that actually did get the no-no, you can't do that. So it makes you wonder, like, what, what was, like, the, like, what is the legality of something like this? I mean, it's never been in trouble. Like, the, the Valve's never gotten the heat from, like, you know, id Software at all for this. You know, it's, what, it's, what is it, 22 to 2022 now? So obviously id didn't care then and they don't care now, but it just, it blows my mind. I mean, they're not using the Quake symbol. They, every time the Quake symbol would have showed up, like, on, for instance... Like the quad damage, it's the like the the lambda symbol, which makes sense because this is based more off of Half Life. But still, like you know, you know what everything is. The analog's there. See, that used to be the uh, quick symbol. Like if you've never seen the quake symbol, just search up quake and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know how to describe it. It's a it's a crescent mood with a nail, like a crescent mood that's on its like basically back with a nail through it. You know what I'm talking about. Surprisingly hard to describe that. Maybe just because I'm an idiot. Who knows? Yeah, I definitely. I think I, I probably played the Deathmatch Classic here more than Counter Strike. Or I, I, you know, the thing is, is I never really got into Counter Strike. Just going a little tangent here. Um, I did remember there still being people playing this. Um, I don't know how dead this is now. I'm gonna assume that this is probably pretty dead. And most people that would want to play something like this would just go play Quake. Especially that you can actually just like. Not only can you easily get original Quake with source ports, with like modern internet connections and like quality of life features, but you also have the remaster with cross-platform play, so you can play this on your Quake on your Nintendo Switch and all that. So, you know, I don't really see like, you know, how, how many people would be interested in this nowadays, but I would assume it'd be people that would like had this when it was a bit newer, like when Steam was still young, or like before Quake was like, you know, so the source ports for Quake were just so good. But, you know, I, I, I can, I'm imagining there's still people that want to play this. They're out there. Like, I'd totally need to get down if someone wanted to, like, throw down and play some Deathmatch Classic. It's the same to me. Like, you know, it's just like playing Quake. I, again, I, I am disputing. It is it is just ever so slightly different enough that I don't consider it a direct... It directly playing Quake. Like, that's why I'm not doing a map series for Quake on top of this. Because this is Deathmatch Classic. We're not talking about Quake. But, you know, if someone offered to play either or, I'd pretty much be down for it. Because I know there's kind of like good, there's probably a good chunk of custom maps out there. I mean, certainly more than Ricochet ever had. I can say that for certainty. No, and you know, and ultimately, no, I, I decided not to go with the Ricochet video anyway. Or the Ricochet, because first of all, I'd make one video. The maps of Ricochet, done. It'd be like 20 minutes long. Not even that, because a map... I'm not even going to describe it, it's just, it's not really w worth it. Also, it doesn't really play like Half-Life Deathmatch anyway, so I figured fuck it, it's its own little thing. And Gunman Chronicles, even by like, you know, old obscure Gold Source games, is pretty obscure. I don't even think you can get it digitally. Plus, too, I don't really know too much about it, because I actually haven't played it before. I was just going to play it because, I, you know, it was kind of like Half-Life, but I figured, nah. Better not get sidetracked by stuff I don't really understand at all. Like, not that I ever claim to understand anything, but you know what I mean. I gotta say, the, I love the sound effect for the double barrel shotgun, super shotgun in this game. It was pretty good in a normal Quake, but I feel the that's one thing. Obviously, the graphics look better, but I feel that some of the sound effects just sound a little bit beefier in this version of the game. You know, I wonder if someone's taken, like, the assets from Deathmatch Classic here and modded them into, like, original, like, Quake, like, using a source port. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, as you can see here, you can't get back up there if you fell down. You didn't grab that super nail gun. Well, tough shit. I mean, unless you want a grenade jump or rocket jump, but you know, I'm not good at grenade jumping. It's a nice touch, too, that they use the uh, t um, Team Fortress Classic voice clips. 
like the little pain grunts and jumping. Because remember, Team Fortress Classic also uh, uh, descended from uh, Quake Team Fortress, which obviously descended from uh, Quake. So it's a nice little mythology gag, you know? So good. It is so good. Oh, I love it. Like, I could do this all day. I'm a simple ass man. I don't need no fancy, like, you know, loadouts, kill streaks, all that. Just give me fucking quad damage and nail gun, and I'm fucking good. And I swear too much. I'm sorry. Fun fact you know, they emulated the quake bobbing, sidewalking. You see, with like this, when I do this with the arrow keys. Uh, it's funny they emulate or brought that back because that was actually in the earliest versions of Half Life. This is relatively well known. Because you remember, Gold Source descends from the Quake engine. They actually had that in. If you've ever have like an original box copy of Quake before it got updated and like patched with all the later stuff, it totally has that like view sway like this. It's great. Also, the PS2 port. That's worth mentioning. I probably saved myself a comment or two. Oh, listen to that. It's so good. Yeah, so I think I've, I've showed you about enough here. So yeah, uh, DMC E1 M2 or Castle the Dam if you want to be technical. Uh, I've really... It's awesome. You should be playing this.